Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, at various places on the internet. It just turned 10:27 a.m. according to computer clock on Friday, November 7, 2014. And here is my review of uh, Betty and Veronica number 273, uh, which I just recently got. Um, I believe I had talked about uh, Betty and Veronica number 272 previously in a previous. Uh, vlog. I don't remember, but if I didn't, uh, the beginning, a uh, really large beginning part of it, like the first 11 pages, um, out of the 24 page issue, is a weird setup where everyone seems downcast and seems that, you know, they're saying goodbye to Betty and Veronica. There's going to be a ceremony, and and they avoid talking about exactly what's going on, so it makes it seem like Betty and Veronica are dead, or that maybe they're going to be sacrificed. But no, it's a farewell in the park because they're going on a like a rotating student student exchange program overseas. So by the end of the issue, they go to the airport, they say their goodbyes, and on the last page, the flight takes off. Yeah? Okay. And on the next to last page, Betty and Veronica leave. They, they walk to their flight. Um, let me see if I can... Okay, here's Betty leaving, you can see in the corner, and then Veronica leaves. Now, okay, th that's part one, and it's weird that the, that the overall storyline itself isn't named in the title. It's just called The Beginning of the End, and the, the whole title of the storyline itself is Farewell, Betty and Veronica. I don't know why it's not in here. But then, at the end, it says, Are you... Are Betty and Veronica Lodge gone forever? Learn how this all began. The secrets will be revealed in Betty and Veronica number 273. It's only the beginning. Right. Okay. So, after they've gone on their plane and flown away, we get a flashback issue. Seriously? We didn't need one. I mean, all that we know, we learned in number 272 that they're going on a, on a student exchange program. But no, they, they have to show how we got there in the first place. Oh, and by the way, this, this farewell scene doesn't even look anything like the one in the previous issue. Uh, you got Ginger Lopez here. She's like a B-list character, maybe. Maybe. And then we got... What's, what's her name? This pink-haired black girl? I think her name is... Joni Jump? I I'm not sure, I forget. From what I heard, she's like a Z-list character that appeared in maybe a handful of stories at most. She doesn't really appear in stories, but they like to use her on the covers an awful lot, and it, it kind of bugs me. She, do she, does she hasn't earned this... Uh, this attention. But anyway, this story is called Betty or Veronica. Uh, again, no title for the overall storyline, which is called Farewell Betty and Veronica. Or or uh, maybe it's Goodbye Forever. Not Goodbye Forever. That, that, was, a, that was an old storyline from something else. This is, yeah, it's Farewell Betty and Veronica. And, um, uh, Basically, the first uh, six pages, six and a half pages, it's just them complaining about how boring Riverdale and the same people and everything and their daily routines are. That's it. They're just, they're bored. Which is understandable. I like that. Um... I like this this part here, in I guess Veronica's room, where Betty.
Betty just has her shoes off and she's lying on a pillow on the floor. I like that. <laughs> anyway. So, a lot of boring stuff. That, uh, Betty's even bored with her parents asking her how school was and how dinner will be ready in 15 minutes and go wash up. She's bored with hearing that every day. <laughs> anyway. Miss Grundy overhears them complaining and whisks them into Mr. Weatherby's office without explanation. And I'm actually more troubled here. Like, I, I immediately noticed there's no computer on Mr. Weatherby's desk and only a few papers, no writing utensils whatsoever. But anyway. Uh, oh, oh, there is a, there is a pen here. A pen case here. Okay, there is. Uh, but there's no computer. And... So, Mr. Weatherby... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> introduces this fair exchange program that the Board of Education is um, financing to send um, a student overseas on a rotating student exchange program for one school year. To India, Japan, France, England, and North Korea. Or, sorry, not North Korea. <laughs> it says Korea. Now, I assume they mean South Korea. At least, I hope so. So, Betty and Veronica assume that they're going. That they're both going. So, uh, But then they find out... Uh, another day that is for only one person and that they have to compete over it there are a couple of morons because in the first meeting Miss Grundy says I think Betty or Veronica is the perfect candidate for fair exchange and Mr. Weatherby says the Board of Ed has approved our sending a student overseas in a... Okay. And then Ms. Grundy says our exchange student won't stay in one country. She'll rotate through schools. That's funny that she automatically says she'll, but anyway. Very singular in the first meeting here. So... I just found it incredibly stupid that they both assumed they would be going. Uh, anyway, Betty and Veronica get into a heated competition. It's very, very, yeah, very heated. Veronica basically buys a lot of support. First, she says her daddy's checks, but then when she said Lodge Enterprises or Industries or whatever, she said, thank you all for coming today, though maybe my paying you triple time helped. So Veronica pays them? Um, but then later on, during the big school board meeting, where the entire town shows up to see who will be the exchange student, which is ridiculous, just like in the first issue where the whole town had a big goodbye ceremony to them in the park. Anyway, uh, Mr. Lodge happens to mention, um, I take it you wrote some checks out of your special account. So we'll have been under her name, right? No, it wouldn't have been a her daddy's checks. Anyway, spoilers if you care. Veronica's the one chosen, and Betty's cry Betty's not crying, but she's upset. Mr. Lodge looks concerned because you know Veronica bought her way into it, but she also told him um, it's actually a good line. 
it's exactly like you would have done, Daddy. You're my role model, and he's, you know, surprised about that, but maybe he can't argue with it. Maybe there's some truth to it. Anyway. So, yeah. Another 24 pages. And it doesn't even reach the beginning point of the previous issue. We still haven't learned how both Betty and Veronica are able to go. And since we already know they both went, since we already know that, this ending where Veronica wins the competition rings hollow. We know they're both going to go because they already showed it in the previous issue. Who tells a story like this? You do not do this. And this cover is a lie. They don't go anywhere in this issue. I'm guessing number 274 is going to be yet another flashback that shows how both Betty and Veronica are able to go. Maybe Mr. Lodge puts up the money for it. Who knows? That's my guess. But... I heard this is going to be a six-part storyline, and they're supposed to visit five countries. There's just no way, there is no way that they would be able to visit all five countries in only four issues. And you, you would think, number six, there would be a big welcome back ceremony in Riverdale, right? So what, three issues to visit five countries? But, but, assuming we get another flashback next issue, that leaves only two issues to visit five countries. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm hoping that this little prologue thing um, isn't part of the six issue count. And you know what's weird? At the end of number 273, the current issue... You know, the second one in the storyline, even though it's a flashback, it says the end of part one. I guess that's true from a chronological standpoint, but ugh, th th this is really frustrating. First issue, fun cover, Hello World, Goodbye Riverdale doesn't actually happen they're still in Riverdale um, second issue front cover they're leaving uh, at the airport it's not true we already saw that in uh, this issue and they didn't leave at the same time but anyway Alright, so I, I'm going to see what number 274 brings, but I'm not impressed so far. Anyway, it's 10.40 a.m., and that's it. Thanks for watching.